The US has joined calls from Australia, Canada and New Zealand in warning Israel against a ground offensive in Rafah in southern Gaza. Anthony Albanese, Justin Trudeau and Christopher Luxon have released a statement declaring a military operation into Rafah would be catastrophic. Human rights attorney and CEO of the International Legal Forum, Arsen Ostrovsky, joins me now from Tel Aviv. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you have been a critic of Australia's response. Uh, tell me why. Uh, thank you, first of all, for having me on uh, this morning, Rita. I mean, look, um, Israel does not have the luxury that Australia does of being surrounded by water. Israel is surrounded by ruthless terrorist enemies like Hamas. Hamas is not like the Salvation Army. Hamas is a bloodthirsty, jihadist terrorist group. On October 7th, they committed the most heinous atrocities, including massacring, raping, torturing, abducting women, children, the elderly. There are still over 130 um, people being held hostage in captivity in Gaza. Now, I think Australia has throughout the years shown incredible bipartisan support for Israel, but it is disappointing to see allies like Australia now undermine Israel's right to uh, self-defense against this kind of uh, heinous um, enemy that Israel is facing. This is not the time for equivocation. This is the time for mates to stand up, to show unequivocal uh, support uh, for your allies as you're facing this challenge. I'm interested in your thoughts on the Biden administration. Uh, they have been uh, weak, you could say. They're also calling for a temporary ceasefire and warning mm. against a ground offensive by Israel in Rafah. Is, is, is there a sign of the US-Israeli relationship fracturing just a little? Look, I'm not sure if it's fracturing. Um, you know, I think from the very beginning, the Biden administration, uh, certainly in the early days, was incredible in the outpouring of support. And this is probably even more so given some of the internal challenges that President Biden has faced with the election year coming up. But I think it was inevitable that, as, uh, that the longer this campaign um, uh, proceeds, the more casualties and destruction there is, um, that there would be uh, differences between Israel and the US. And we're certainly seeing some of those uh, arise now, including with respect to the operation in Rafah, uh, with possible ceasefire, and certainly with some of the I think uh, unfortunate statements perhaps they're saying in terms of, um, I think it was only just uh, last week that President Biden indicated that perhaps Israel was going, I quote, over the top in its response um, in Gaza. I think that's certainly not uh, Israel like Australia, like the US will do anything and uh, everything possible in order to, uh, to rescue its hostages. Now, in Europe, we've got Hungary, which is standing firm by Israel. The Jerusalem Post reports Hungary has twice blocked a European Union consensus statement against the IDF's military operations uh, against Hamas in Rafa. Um, uh, the quote there from the senior diplomat is, Hungary stood alone in the EU. Uh, why do you think that is? What, is? Is there a special relationship between... Um, Israel and Hungary at the moment? Look, I think Hungary just gets it. Simple as that. They understand the security threat that Israel is facing. They understand the strategic threat Israel is facing. They certainly have a keen awareness of uh, of history. And I think they have a firm belief in, uh, in the power uh, of democracies and sovereign nations to do as they need in order to uh, to thwart the face uh, the security very real security challenges they're facing you know there's a lot of talk as you noted um about rafa um both in terms of what the australian government has uh, has indicated with some of its uh, pronouncements the us and uh, europe now in terms of trying to pass this resolution but we have to remember that israel wouldn't be going into rafa if Hamas would just release the hostages and surrender. It is that simple. This can all end tomorrow if mm. Hamas surrenders and releases the hostages. That is where the international community, including Australia, ought to be uh, exerting pressure. Now, Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Israel is willing to go it alone if that's what needs to happen. Uh, is that likely? Can you tell us about what the Moody is like in Israel? Is there enormous pressure on Netanyahu to finish the job? Uh, and is is he losing support at all? You know, um, 
Israel is a country where there uh, is no shortage of disagreement. Um, but on this, there is overwhelming consensus and unity from across not just the political spectrum, but um, people on the street as well. Um, there is an expectation that Israel must do everything possible in order to not just defeat Hamas and rescue the hostages, but to ensure that this will not and cannot ever happen again. The communities in the south um, cannot live with um, Hamas on the border, where this can repeat, where what we saw on October 7th will repeat again. So right now there is incredible support for the government, for the military forces to do everything necessary in order to rescue the hostages and to finally dismantle Hamas once and for all.